Hi, I'm Cindy Pridmore, Senior Engineering Geologist at the California Geological Survey. And we're going to talk a little bit about earthquakes and faults in California. Why do we have faults? And why do we have earthquakes? Where do they come from? Um, you know, we look around, you know, do you see a fault? You know, what, what's going on inside the earth that makes us have faults in California and why we're so famous for them? Well, if we stand back and look at the globe, the world, North America, where California is, uh, is actually on a tectonic plate. It's part of the crust. And then the ocean also is part of a tectonic plate. And the ocean uh, plate is actually trying to move next to the North American plate. And the North American plate is actually trying to go a little bit to the southwest. But overall, they have a sliding motion between the two of them. Now, if we want to take a little bit closer look at what that looks like, that comes down to looking at our fault map. And if you see the, the highlighted pink area, that's the fault that we're the most famous for. That is the San Andreas Fault, which also is that plate boundary between the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate. So some of us in California live on the Pacific Plate, and some of us live on the North American Plate. So we have two plates um, there that, that cut through our state. So why is it important to know where these faults are? Well, do you think it would be a good idea if we built on top of an earthquake fault? Well, in the past, before we knew much about earthquakes, um, a lot of buildings and places were. Um, I've made these two blocks here. We're going to pretend those are crustal blocks and uh, basically made out of shoe boxes. Uh, but it can show us how, why it's not a good idea to live on top of at, right across an earthquake fault. So if I have a building right here, so here's my building, and this block moves towards you, what's going to happen to that building on there? Okay, let's go. Earthquake! Ah, so it's not a good idea to build across an earthquake fault zone. So what we do in California is we map these faults out so we know where they are so people won't build across them because it's hard to build a building, design a building that won't fall down. So you can build a, near a fault, but you can't build across the fault. So, you know, you don't want to live on top of a fault itself. When an earthquake happens, the energy moves out in all different directions. So we also have to think about ground shaking. Where does that ground shaking come from? How come uh, they just don't slide past each other? You know, if this, if this fault block wants to slide past this one, how come it just doesn't do that? Well, like, there's actually a lot of friction in the fault zone mm -hmm. that keeps those faults from moving right past each other. And that friction builds up as energy over time. To show you how that happens is we have this little diagram here called the earthquake machine. This is a, should put this in the middle. We'll move our fault sign down here and we'll put this right here where you can see it. I'll put it at an angle. So this little fault machine uh, is a spinoff from an activity by iris, I-R-I-S dot E-D-U. And you can go online and, fall, and find that. But basically, if this is our fault zone, and for a vertical fault, we could think of it, this is one side of a fault block and that's the other. But we're gonna look at how friction plays in an earthquake, because sometimes it's, it's really unpredictable to know when an earthquake's gonna occur. So we're gonna try to move this block a little bit at a time, and it's gonna store up energy in the rubber band until um, there's so much energy in the rubber band, it overcomes the, the friction along the fault zone. So let's say 10 years go by and this block is moving this far. It's, it's still stuck. So this plate wants to move this way, but this plate is holding it back. Move it a little bit more, nothing happens. We're storing up a lot of energy in the fault zone. We try to move this block a little bit more. Oh, there was our earthquake. So finally the energy gets released. But sometimes not all of the energy gets released, so there's still some stored up energy here. So it gets very difficult to actually predict when earthquakes occur, but we know why, because they're trying to move past each other, but they're stuck because of the friction. But when enough energy gets stored up in, in, in the fault blocks, it overcomes the, the friction in the fault zone. So California does have a lot of faults, but we don't hold it against us because it actually, earthquake faults in California have made our landscape, our mountains, our deserts, our valleys, our coastline, uh, as beautiful as they are today. If you'd like to know more about earthquakes and faults in California, go to our California Geological Survey website. Thank you.